Today I want to talk about creating your own style, and also in the midst of that, reviewing the new Blackmagic Micro Color Panel. I've been using this for, I want to say, four to six months, somewhere in that range, and I feel like I've had it long enough to actually have a proper muscle memory and a better understanding of who could benefit from this, who it's not for, and uh, just my overall thoughts and usability of it. Because in a nutshell, the purpose of this color panel is not to give you access to a new set of tools. You can do everything with a mouse on screen or through keyboard shortcuts. The purpose of a color panel is for speed, efficiency, and in my opinion, just getting more immersed into your creative flow state by being able to do multiple things at once and to actually kind of like feel the changes of the images rather than having to think about like, what menu is this, uh, you know, specific tool under or something like that. So first of all, we talk about like the hardware of it. It's definitely a lot lighter and smaller than the previous generation and all of their other color panels because this is intended to be more of a portable machine that you can take around with your laptop as well as probably notice this slit right here. This slit right here is actually intended for an iPad. So now you can have a completely portable color workstation. And since the iPad Pros have the beautiful XDR displays to them, uh, it's honestly a great little mobile colorist workflow, especially if you're trying to build out like a look on set. This is a great workstation for that. Now in practically all my videos, people ask me what stand am I using to prop this up here? Cause I see a lot of people who review this uh, basically bring it out when they're using it. They put it like in front of their keyboard so they can do all their color adjustments. And then you have your keyboard up here. I like to keep it pretty much permanently right in front of the keyboard, even though it does have a slight angle to it. Uh, it's just not angled enough to really be comfortable and not like reaching over the keyboard. So I actually use this stand that I did a video on a couple of years ago. It's like an iPad uh, smart hub by Anchor. It's got a bunch of extra ports. But one of my favorite parts of it is it's ridiculously strong hinge. Like this does not move easily, but it's incredibly smooth and customizable. So I basically just set it there and then I'm able to kind of just rest this on top because this whole top part is sticky here and it kind of just fits perfectly and I can angle this however I want it. So I could have it like at a taller angle or I kind of just found the, the sweet spot right about there. For the cable, I just have a USB-C power cable with a right angle adapter. The right angle adapter literally just keeps uh, like the, the cable from like sticking out here and just makes it look a little bit nicer. The backlit keys make it easy to edit in dim environments, which I normally am when, you know, I'm not filming a YouTube video around it. However, I will say I do wish the top row was also backlit because some of my most commonly used knobs at the top, like contrast, uh, saturation, highlights, are not as easily visible in, in dim environments. Now, of course, finding your style isn't just about the visuals, but it's also about the audio, more specifically, the music. And just like I've been trying to implement color better, there's another component of the video making process that I've also been trying to improve. So a couple weeks ago, Michelle brought me to the Hans Zimmer concert, which like ultimately changed my life. I really didn't understand how a uh, concert about, you know, movie scores could necessarily do that, but uh, it did. And now I am starting to look at music, not completely differently, but I'm starting to feel it a lot more and feel the urge to incorporate more, uh, you know, cinematic music into my project. And so what better way than to come over to Artlist, of course, my music place of choice. I'm going to head over to music and I'm going to pick the genre of cinematic. You know, sometimes you just get so lucky and one of the first music options you click is the one you want to go with. I think I just got super lucky. Part of that is huge thanks to the highlights feature up here, which automatically takes you to kind of the the what I'm guessing they imagine is the best part of the song. I don't know if the artist chooses that or not, but what I want to look at here is the stems. And this has actually become one of my favorite tools within Artlist. There's, you know, other sites that have stems, but no one that I've used does it like this, where you can essentially mix it within uh, Artlist before you ever download anything. So you can almost hear the mix that you want to before you actually finish the project. And so I can take a look here and just start playing the song. 
and obviously the whole mix is playing but then if i want to hear her without the backing vocals i can mute this maybe i don't want um, the piano as well but we can also do the reverse and uh, sometimes i like to do it this way where i just solo things i'm a strings person at heart actually literally just bought a violin the other day because I am mad at myself for quitting in the seventh grade. And so I'm relearning that. And so I can slowly start adding things back in. So I can already tell that I'm going to love this song. So obviously I can go in and download if I only want, say, if I only want the strings, I can download uh, a file of just that specific stem. But since I want the majority of these, I think I'm just going to turn off the backing vocals. I'm going to do download all stems, download a WAV file, and uh, bring these into our editor and mix it for our final project in there. But I just saved myself so much time from having to like test out a bunch of different songs and download a bunch of different stems only to find that I don't like a mix. If you're a fan of quality music and you want to be able to mix better for yourself and uh, not waste a bunch of time when it comes to the music soundtracks of your videos definitely check out our list in the description below and a huge shout out to them for sponsoring this video now since this is all about you know feeling the colors and everything how does the quality of the buttons the knobs and balls uh feel i'll say the knobs all feel very nice at the top they have just enough resistance to where you can really feel like you're fine tuning it but also loose enough to where you can make kind of quick adjustments if you had like to turn it a lot it's pretty easy. They all feature a push to reset feature, so you can just simply press down on them to reset whatever actions you just did. All the buttons around feel very nice. They're not incredibly clicky. They're not super mushy. They're a nice balance, again, for the considering this is like a budget color panel. And while some of the buttons just have, you know, the the normal backlit keys to them. A couple of them, which are important, will interact and change colors. For example, the bypass, if you wanna turn off all of your color uh, effects very quickly, by pressing that, we can see it is now red. This is very helpful because a lot of times you'll be looking at a grade, be like, wait, what happened here, blah, 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 and your brain just doesn't be like, hey, look at the top where the FX are turned on or the bypass is turned on. And now I can look down at my panel, see that that's red and be like, oh, I got to turn my effects back on. Now for feel, I know a lot of the kind of debate is around the trackballs and the uh, spinning discs here. So if you have no idea how these work, you have three different trackballs and rotating rings here. You have your lift, gamma, and your gain, or your shadows, midtones, and highlights if that's easier. Now by turning the wheel, you affect the exposure of that area. So this is my shadows, you have your highlights over here, and then the trackballs within them affect the hue of that. So by rotating this around, you can actually see on my screen in my lift, uh, if I wanna go more towards blue, I can take the trackball to the bottom right, or if I want to go opposites, then I can go to the top left. Most of the time you're not making huge adjustments to uh, your hues, right? If I just want to take this subtly, I can just start rotating a little bit. Oh, but then I want to go down. It just feels way more refined than a uh, than using your mouse and dragging that around. The other benefit to a panel is you can do multiple things at once, right? So if I had my mouse and I want to play around with my exposure and my lift cam again, then I can only interact with one of these at the same time. But oftentimes what I'll do is I'll go in here and if I want to add a parallel note or something, I can go in and I can be adjusting my midtones and my shadows all at once. And this whole time I'm able to stay focused on the image itself. Again, I'm not looking down here at like menus and looking back up and grabbing mouse and oh, I didn't actually grab my highlight slider. I got to look right here. No, I can literally just like stare at the image, go up here. I know I'm touching my highlight uh, button right here. Maybe boost in some color right there and add a touch of midtone detail. So it's nice being able to do multiple things at the same time. Now, again, you have so many of the big uh, features or keyboard shortcuts you would probably use on here. I love being able to, you know, play forward. You can play in reverse. You can quickly jump to your next clip that you're going to grade. You can go frame by frame if you want. 
You can add stills, you can copy and paste effects onto different nodes, you can add different types of nodes. But there's actually more functionality buried deep into these little shift buttons right here. So you've shift up and shift down. And when you press and hold them, they glow green. And what this does is actually give a second and third function to almost all of the different buttons on here. So let's say I want to add a node here. Of course, I have my add node, but oftentimes I want to add a parallel node. And so instead of having to go grab my mouse, right click, add node, add parallel, I can go right here and hit shift down, add node, and that's going to add a parallel node. Now I can also, of course, add a window thanks to this real quick. But again, instead of having to go in and transform it with a mouse, I can actually control it by holding shift up and then actually using my different uh, wheels right here and the trackballs, I can rotate this, I can add feathering, resize it a bit. And now when I let go, the green automatically turns off and I'm back in my adjustments and now I can go in and change the exposure of, you know, whatever's within that window. So make sure if you pick one of these up, the Git Start Guide that it actually comes with uh, has all of those listed out. You can also find all of the extra functionality in the quick start guide on Blackmagic support website, not the whole manual. I spent forever looking for that in there to tell you guys about it, but it's actually easily in the quick start guide. Uh, if we go down here, you can see that what the shift up and shift down does of each of these different keys. It is nice that they added this user button right here, which will give us uh, extra functionality where we can map a specific function or feature directly to that. And that user button will get three different uses thanks to the shift button. So you can shift up user, shift down user. However, still at the time of recording this video, that user button has no functionality. And it even says it uh, in this quick start guide. Where is it? As of this writing, this function is not available yet. It seems like it'd be a pretty easy function to add, so I don't know why that hasn't been added yet. And if it has, uh, please someone in the comments tell me how to go in because I can't find it in the keyboard shortcuts or any settings. Now, some people may ask, does this panel give me any functionality outside of the color display? I mean, that's why a lot of us like these, like, you know, Torbox Neo or like the speed editor, like can we get multi-page functionality out of it? And I will say some of the features work on like the edit page, for example, like we do still have our playback. Uh, we can play forward, play in reverse, stop. We can jump to the next clip easily. Uh, things like auto color work, undo, redo, viewer makes it full screen. So there's a handful of functionalities you can get on the other different pages. It would be cool if you brought like the scroll wheel uh, functionality to these, uh, these wheels up here, if I could scroll around the timeline or something. But no, of course, primarily this is a color panel meant for the color page. Now, who is this for? If you're really into color work and you want to improve on it, but you're still on a budget, this is a fantastic intro level that I think can get to anywhere from intro to intermediate. And honestly, if you're advanced, but you're constantly traveling on the go, like I said, maybe you're doing color stuff on set, this is going to have all the primary functionality what you're going to gain by going up to the uh, mini panel, which is you know a little over 2000 US dollars, that's gonna add some screens, some extra buttons, extra functionality right on the panel. It's definitely, I've actually reviewed it before, uh, a lot bigger, a lot more robust. So you definitely have to have a bigger table if you're trying to have all your editing functionality in one place. So in that sense, I actually prefer the micro panel because I'm able to keep all of my editing and cutting tools as well as my color tools laid out on one desk without ever having to change anything. If I had the mini panel, I would literally have to like keep it off to the side, bring it in when I'm using it and then move it uh, when I'm cutting or just using my computer. I will say the one weird thing which feels like an oversight is so many of Blackmagic's products like this give you a DaVinci Resolve license. So I would love to say if you are looking to buy DaVinci Resolve Studio for an already $300, buy this and you basically get it for $200 because you know, it's 500, 300 for Resolve Studio. I mean, if you spend 400 on the speed editor, you get DaVinci Resolve Studio, which you can see there. So you essentially get DaVinci Resolve Studio for a hundred bucks. However, this and the new replay editor don't come with DaVinci Resolve Studio, which just 
feels odd to me. I don't know. Maybe they were like losing too much money by just essentially giving away DaVinci Resolve Studio, but I don't know. That's that's an interesting take. As always, I'm curious, have you guys ever used the micro panel? What are your thoughts on it? Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.